I believe that when you hope, it's very necessary to be hopeful to fight for justice. You want to, you see those flowers there? Gautam knows that I love lilies, so he often brought me almost every 10 days, he would come with a bunch of flowers, which is beautiful. And that is Gautam's favorite chair, to sit and rock. And he says, he, this is the first song he told me, will you send me lyrics for this because I keep humming it, which means you still hope, you still hope that there will be a dawn for which you fought, basically. Yeah. No, I was also very shaken because firstly that it was stolen itself is a bit shocking. How can anybody steal somebody's pets who's dependent on it, he's near blind without it. They know what are these harassment tactics. They know Stan Swam is dependent on it, most crucially because of his Parkinson. They know Gotham is 100% dependent on his glasses and he's somebody who loves to read and write. I must say that Gautam actually is backed by an excellent team of lawyers, two of them here, two of them in Bombay. And Gautam has 100% faith in his lawyers. See, this is where we always kept our lilies, yeah? And Gautam used to come and ring the bell and I go and there is. And sometimes if he got too busy, if he forgot, I'll just look at him. So that's when he brought this peace lily plant. And please, and you must say hello to Suman. She's the one who looks up. Suman, hello. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> you want to, you see those flowers there? Gautam knows that I love lilies, so he often brought me almost every 10 days, he would come with a bunch of flowers, which is beautiful. And once he came with a plant of peace lilies, you know, those tiny lilies that open, it's just a white leaf, it's called peace lilies. So he brought me it's still sitting there and there were two peace lilies in it and it lasts a long time. And then when the, he was arrested and when the leaves were actually withering, I just took it outside and I put it in one of the plants and I forgot about it. And then when he was, Gautam was in Tihar and he was suddenly taken away from here to Palo, Bombay. And I was very shaken and I was just walking outside mm -hmm. and suddenly my eyes fell on that pot that I had, which Gautam had bought. It was growing a peace lily. It is one of the most lovely stories and suddenly I felt so hopeful. I said, this is a sign. And if you look at it carefully, this uh, fierce hope that one lives with for justice, a just world, and where these things don't happen, what has been happening in the last few years, particularly all these 16 people, there seems to be a big conspiracy about everything. So from students to women to men to intellectuals, so many people have been arrested and behind bars for more than two years, some of them. I believe that when you hope, it's very necessary to be hopeful to fight for justice. I must say that Gautam actually is backed by an excellent team of lawyers, two of them here, two of them in Bombay, and they are your closest friends. So how do you deal with lockdown and his arrest at the same time? So ma'am, how often is it that you, you know, get to talk to him? Like how you know, it is very strange because for that one month he was in uh, Tihar jail here in Delhi, he was calling me once a week and a good eight minutes, seven minutes. And then since he went there, the rule now is, according to the jail manual, that he can call once in two weeks. 
So usually within those two weeks he does call and as you know because of the pandemic and COVID jails had shut visitors and family from visiting so we hadn't seen each other at all and like Tihar started the practice of video calls so you can see your family member your loved ones and that wasn't happening so finally he did make a video call I still remember I think it was 16th November and we were seeing each other for the first time in se after seven months that itself was a very strange and wonderful experience to at least be able to see him and he looked good he looked in good health also and that was nice and otherwise uh, see communication is a big thing when your partner is in jail for all of them who are inside jail so letter writing and it's wonderful to now again after all these years handwritten letters going to the Do you post see office them? yeah i write Do you have them? yeah i have his and mine i have posted mm -hmm. so in my last letter i sent him lyrics of songs some of his favorite songs yes. he said he's yearning for it so he hums now and then and he said but i forget the words so i said okay we'll send you the lyrics and you by the time he comes out he'll be singing happily <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shook by this pandemic. It just suddenly happened and all of us were just caught up of guard. Mm. And then uh, when he was in jail at that time, what was it that went through your mind? Like, no, it was a very difficult period, you know. Gautam surrendered on the 14th mm -hmm. of April and March end 24th or something, the lockdown began. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't step out. He couldn't go out to meet some of his family. He has a large family to go and meet them before leaving. Mm -hmm. So that is a very sad thing to have happened and uh, he had just become a grandfather. His daughter had a baby girl in February but in March he had to surrender his passport so he couldn't visit her. So I send him photographs of his grandchild, her name is Naomi and he's very happy with that. Yeah. Given today's time, actually, we were talking about hope earlier. It's a daily challenge, not just for me, those who are inside, they have to remain hopeful. And for all of us, like you said, you're a young person growing up in a country which I had never imagined would become what it is today. You know, I'm from a generation that really was active in all the struggles. I've been part of the women's movement for near, more than 30 years. So you had expected a different kind of world, you know, where again the whole thing was about justice, equality, yeah. democracy, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, to be able to feel free, to express your opinions, to be able to write what you want to write. So all that is becoming a, and the threats. But uh, when he was arrested, when my house was raided twice, yeah. That is a moment of dread, I will say that. So you go through various stages, you know, shock and disbelief that this actually happened. It takes a long time. The deep sorrow and grief of it, that takes a long time. And the, the dread, you know, in the pit of your stomach, because that's how the raids happened. That's how he was taken away. And so it is. But today I feel you have to restore yourself for that hope that one day he will walk out, all of them. Mm. That's my hope and... Uh, his work just suddenly being so um, termed as, you know, anti-national. Yeah, no, I'm very proud of his work. I'm very proud because I've seen very closely how Gautam works, how meticulous he is in his research, how passionate he is about his field work mm. and how he writes. You know, so I like that and that is the shocking part of it because this is not a person mm -hmm. who's either violent or anti-national. In fact, he is a very proud Indian. Mm -hmm. I know that. And he would want the best out of this society, of this society of which he is a part. And he's always fought for that, always. And he's fearless and he always stood for his convictions and see what happens.
That is the sad part of it. Okay. So because mm -hmm. I didn't have space for that. He has some seven, eight shelves full of huge wall to wall. Yeah. So he is somebody who is an avid reader. Right. And he's somebody who loves to write and read and music, of course. Mm -hmm. And he has these diaries he maintains every mm -hmm. year for his notes, ah. which were seized by the mm -hmm. quite a few of them. Oh. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So the songs are uh, played in this room? Yeah, yeah. Here's our speaker. <laughs> and that is... I want to hear the song that you wrote the lyrics to. I mean, to him. Wo subha kabhi to aayegi. I'll play that. Wo subha kabhi to aayegi. And he says, he, this is the first song he told me, will you send me lyrics for this because I keep humming it, which means you still hope, you still hope that there will be a dawn for which you fought, basically. Yeah. The whole spectacle issue that happened, that is something that, I mean, shook people. I mean, that was something that really um, affected a lot of people because, mm. I mean, for an old person, mm. you know, somebody who's in jail, for, for, for a person like that to be without spectacles for so many years. No, days. it is inhuman. Yeah, is, yeah. I mean, there are no words to describe it. I know, I know. No, I was also very shaken because firstly that it was stolen itself is a bit shocking. How can anybody steal somebody's specs who's dependent on it? He's near blind without it. So that itself shows that it's something so uh, unbelievable or inhuman that it could happen and the jail administration should be aware. They can't wash off their hands saying, are we supposed to look after their belongings? What belongings? Two pairs of clothes and specs that you live with. It's not just for reading. It's his life. It, it's his two eyes. Yeah. So no, I was very shaken. I was frustrated. I was angry. I was deeply sad that this could happen. But then uh, he couldn't call for three days. He had to wait for his two week turn, right? So he called me on 30th November and he was video call and he was squinting his eyes and then I asked him, he said, Saiba, this is what has happened, it's a bit urgent, could you do something? So I went, his optician, his year, and he has a record of last 20 years. So he immediately, in two days, he gave it to me, Himalaya opticians, and I posted it on 3rd because he had already spoken in the jail and told the admin that it's an emergency and he's expecting the specs. And then on 7th I tracked to see whether it had reached him and I was shocked to learn. It says in the tracking thing, received, refused, returned. So then I didn't know what to do really. So I wrote to his lawyers in Bombay and Delhi both and I called them. I said this is what and I attached the tracking receipt. They prepared a press statement, which I signed, and rest, I think it's great that the newspapers picked it up with the way they did, you know, both, all of you, and the mainstream media too, actually, you know, Indian Express, all of them. So it helped. It helped in the sense sometimes from the worst comes out something which is positive again. You know, where the superintendent took notice and he called Gotham to the room and wanted to clarify and confirm whether this had happened and Gotham did mention, but Gotham had no clue that the specs had been stolen. I mean, had been returned after being received. So he was very shocked, but then the good thing is the superintendent assured that if I resend it in his name, he would pass it on to Gotham and I hold him to that assurance and that promise because in the meantime they had asked me to send a prescription so I believe they have made a, a spare pair for him and which he's been given okay. and the most significant part is the Bombay High Court mm -hmm. actually mentioning mm -hmm. Gotham's case and the, lost, uh, the return glasses and it used the word that humanity is most important it said and nobody had approached the court the judges on their own looking at some other case of the co-accused the two boys from men from uh, Kabir Kala Manch so yeah that is when the judges mentioned this and then the home minister of Maharashtra government has 
ordered a probing to it. Yeah. So I think sometimes with this mess which was absolutely avoidable mm -hmm. has come this. So you still live with hope, right? That right, wrong will be right, actually. They know what are these harassment tactics. They know mm -hmm. Stan Swami is dependent on it most crucially because of his Parkinson. They know Gotham is 100% dependent mm. on his glasses and he's somebody who loves to read and write. Mm. And you take that one thing away from a person, what does it mean? Mm. That's, and who's accountable? You don't expect specs to be stolen inside a jail. So I do believe that jail administration is responsible and accountable. So is the state government mm. under whom prison administration and prison conditions come. Mm. So I'm just hoping that we all look into this whole question of what are the prison conditions of so many nameless yeah. prisoners, mostly under trials, mm. who are languishing in jail. Yeah. And mm. the role of the state government in this would be important actually. And then there are so many cases in which conviction doesn't happen and then a person comes out of jail after having you know, years spent. together. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, who's to answer for that? Exactly. So already in Bhima Koregaon, at least six of them have spent yeah. more than two and a half years already with no trace of a trial. Yeah. Here, in all the 16, the charge sheets have been filed. Yeah. So what prevents them from starting a trial? It should be a speedy and fair trial because if you talk of human liberty, it's not one individual, yeah. 16, and it's not just 16, there are hundreds yeah. who are 70% and above are under trials. They're not convicted, but they're treated as criminals, which yeah. I think is yeah. abhorrent yeah. and should be looked into, certainly. Yeah. Um, do you, uh, the sir also and you also, do you also like tell him like Urdu couplets sometimes? Of course we do. He is a great Hindi uh, Pandit. Hmm. He reads a lot of Hindi, he recites beautifully. So he does in Hindi, Pash poems particularly are his favorite. There's always a book here of Pash. Hmm. And he would recite, I have his videos and pictures because I've kept it. No, I think it's very unjust. I think it's criminal on the part of the state to have done this because in my life, I've been in hundreds of protests myself, but I've never seen this kind of, a, except in emergency, where I was witness to that. And my generation knew what emergency was and how black those two years were. This, I would say, is worse than emergency period. I'm saying it because I do believe that it's the worst times we are living in. Whether you are young students, they were never targeted like this. Young people, young students out on a protest for constitutional democratic rights as citizens of this country. And if you shake that and you begin to believe that citizens themselves can be divided on the basis of religion and their citizenship has to be proved on the basis, that we never imagined would happen, mm -hmm. that they have passed in uh, the parliament. Mm -hmm. This is how they have roughshod over so many things and bill after bill because they have the majority mm -hmm. in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So they don't care about people firstly, all those in jail particularly, farmers today, students, mm -hmm. universities being attacked. I mean, I had never imagined. And when we friends of my generation talk, because it's still vivid in our minds, the struggles, the streets that we walked mm -hmm. fighting for this. And today we talk and we all agree that this is worse than the emergency that we have seen. Mm -hmm. This is what I would say. And that there are protests still happening. Nobody is giving up. Mm -hmm. You know, what you do with this, first you try to divide, you communalize, you polarize, but you also try to instill fear amongst people. You do this and this is what happens to you. But are people really so afraid? Today also people speak, people write, and that should happen, actually. And struggles will carry on. We may not be able to see the kind of as we believe that it will, but your generation, I hope, and I do believe that will, and you also should hope for a better world and future. The wire ke aur videos dekhne ke liye subscribe kare aur bell icon per click kare.
स्वतंत्र पत्रकारिता की आर्थिक मदद करने के लिए डिस्क्रिप्शन में दिए गए लिंक पर जाएं और अपनी राशि चुनें।